everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and we are here in our island treasure zoo today getting ready for a very exciting event. I am pretty sure our lovely Oceana here should be laying an egg pretty soon. I don't know how many eggs but our Galapagos tortoise is going to be having some babies. They successfully made it and she will be having some babies pretty soon and I actually was really excited. I looked up a lot of information about Galapagos tortoise young and basically she has to dig a bit of a nest. She'll dig a hole in the ground. Oh, is she gonna lay the egg? Is she gonna lay the egg? Is she digging the hole in the ground? Oh my gosh, is this happening right now? Is this really happening right now? Is she making the nest? Or was she just rolling around? She might have just been rolling around. Is this even her? I don't even know. Wait, did she just lay her egg? Did she seriously just lay her egg? Oh my gosh! Did this just happen? It, Oceana! <gasps> Oceana, where's your egg? <gasps> she laid her eggs, you guys! We saw it happen just in time! Oh my gosh, sir, do you know how lucky you are? Stephen Lowe. Look at that, Oceana just laid an egg. Well, that is so exciting. So when I was researching the Galapagos tortoise, I found out that the female will dig a nice little hole in the ground like you saw her back legs move. And she'll actually create kind of a, a little dome by peeing in there and making mud with her urine, which sounds so weird, but that's what they'll do. And then she will lay her eggs, cover them back up and lay on top of them to press the dirt down and then walk off. And that's the end of her childcare. And I guess she's, we could say she's like laying on top of them right now. Look at your fabulous rump, Oceana. Look at this, look at this. Oh my goodness, Scholar's Award. Oh my gosh, yes. $25,000 do donated for educational donations. Sweet. So does that mean I am getting a little bit close? Where's my thing? Where's my favorite thing? There it is. This is always my goal to get the headset kiosk. So we just need to keep throwing down educators and educational pieces. And hopefully that'll really help. But then what will happen with Oceana's eggs if she ever gets off of them is that they'll stay underground for about four to eight months. No, my platypus is really sick. Well, we'll take care of our other egg-laying platypi or egg-laying creatures. Why are you really sick, you silly goose bucket? You guys were eating just fine a minute ago. Mwah. All right, it's the dirty water, isn't it? Oh, let's get the water clean then. Maybe it's just the dirty water that's making them so stubborn to like come over here. They're just not eating again. So, oh, Ted Worthina. We'll go meet Ted Worthina in just a second, too. But Ted Worthina doesn't like being in such a smelly exhibit either. Geez Louise, I'll have to put more, more keepers in on that zone. But the Galapagos eggs will be underground for four to six months. And then, after four to six months, depending on temperature, they will hatch. And their temp. Oh, we found the research for the water filter just when we came over here. That's amazing. All right, hang on, platypus. You should be able to get enough food. I don't know why you're not able to get food. We'll figure it out in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Oh my goodness, what on earth was even that? That was interesting. What is this? Who knows how that, that hedge fence went down there? All right, I'm gonna come over here. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah, oh, this is a little tricky. All right, we're gonna come over here and then I'm going to grab the tank. Come on, tank. Come on, there we go. Boom, there we go. And we should be able to finally get their water cleaned. Oh, maybe now they'll stop complaining about it. So that should be much better. All right, now we have to go scoop some bird poop while I try to teach you guys <laughs> someone successfully. There we go. Try to teach you guys someone successfully about Galapagos tortoise eggs. So four to six months there in the ground. The temperature that they incubate out will determine the gender. Look at all these people over here. I'm so happy. And they're all wearing the little hats. Ah, oh, that's so fun. But the temperature that the tortoise eggs stay at will determine what gender the babies are when they come out, which is kind of true for a lot of different reptiles. Oh, look at everybody, a little family over here. And pretty darn fun. Oh my gosh, there is a ton of bird poop. We need more bird poop scoopers. We need more bird poop scoopers, stat. Let's see, that's just the car tire, okay. And then the babies will wander around and it turns out that Galapagos tortoise young do not become sexually mature, ready to have babies of their own until sometimes up to 40, 40 years old, 40 years. Like humans are done having babies most of the time by the time they're 40, like the vast majority are. And Galapagos tortoises, m some of them, because of how long it takes them to reach their full size in the wild, some of them may not even go and like be able to lay their first eggs until they're 40 years old. And that just blew my mind. So who knows how old Oceana is? She's at least 25, which is what I think was the average minimum when I was researching them. 
in age and it just like oh if you guys know she's just still sitting there they don't really move a lot she's still just sitting there on on her eggs that's fine how long your her eggs are going to take a while to hatch okay there we go but yeah if you guys have more cool facts about galapagos tortoises then please let me know because i thought that was really fun to read all of those things and there were also excerpts from when charles darwin who i hope you guys know who charles darwin is i really do but there were excerpts from when he was interviewing people about the tortoises and a lot of the people who lived on the island said that the only time they ever saw a dead adult tortoise that had not been killed by a human was when these guys would just like walk off a cliff and die <laughs> so that kind of made me laugh even though it was really sad because apparently that's the only time that you really lose galapagos tortoises as adults if a human doesn't kill them because they don't have any natural predators other than humans but they can be affected if there's like a fire or if there's a flood or if they can't get enough food or if they just plain walk right off a cliff so i thought that was kind of interesting i had i for some reason i had never pictured them just like walking off a cliff and I don't know why. Like, do you really think about... Oh, okay, there. she's working so hard. Let's have Keeper Kelly come and work in here with her. All right. And there we go. And we'll do Peafowl. Peafowl Keeper Kelly. All right. And by the way, all of the couscous have names now. And I think that 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 you guys suggested some really awesome ones we have a whole bunch there's carrie some of them i had to switch the gender of the name on because we had a lot more girls than boys it turns out so oh and i've got a little bit of path in there we want to remove look at how popular this area is i'm so happy with this and everybody is really happy over here maybe i should just move the bench i'm just gonna try moving the bench over here because everybody seems to be sitting down and like watching either the fountain or this now let's put an educator over here too but yeah, so I hope that helps you guys learn a little bit more about the Galapagos tortoise. I definitely learned a little bit more about them just because I saw that our tortoise was pregnant. And I was like, I wonder what I should tell everybody about the eggs. And it turned out to be some really awesome stuff. All right, and let's see if I can put down maybe one of the educational facilities. Oh, and we need some donation booths over here. What am I doing? If we want those educational donations, then I need to like put this puppy right over here and right over here. Oh, look at her. What, what kind of little backpack does she have? <gasps> look at that peafowl backpack. How have I never seen that before? Oh, that's amazing. That's just amazing. I love it. Oh, my gosh. That's the coolest thing. All right. And she is donating. She's going to be our very first donator or a second donator. No, I think she just turned around and donated like three times. So she donated like $202. Good going, ma'am. All right. Is this kid going to donate? Oh, my gosh. Let's watch. How much is he going to put in? Yeah, are you, are you putting something in, little guy? Maybe? That's okay, you're just a little kid. I, he gave a, 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 no, no, no money. That's okay, he's a kid. He doesn't need to do that. He doesn't need to do that. Oh, he likes a little Norwegian lemming. Aw, that's so sweet. But yeah, so Galapagos tortoise, apparently the eggs might hatch pretty soon, which would be fun. And actually, what are you complaining about, young child? You need to use the restroom. Oh, we probably need to work on getting a restaurant in here pretty soon, huh? Oh, that would be a good thing. That would be a good thing to get in here. And a lot of you guys have been suggesting like making a proper food court. So I think maybe we'll put a restaurant over here. No, we should probably put it. I should probably move the conservation breeding center maybe over here, like off the path and turn this into the restaurant. So we'll get ready for that. All right, let's turn this over here. And then I can see this becoming, well, here, we can even do it like this. Because apparently the kid wants to walk over here. We can kind of put it at the back so it can sort of look like a building that you're supposed to walk to. There we go. There we go. And also, I don't know if you guys have heard, but the since we're speaking about the Galapagos tortoise, I believe I mentioned it to you already, but just as a reminder, because I think it's cool, the tortoises in, I don't think they're Galapagos tortoise, but other species of tortoise are doing very well over in, um, over on the islands right now they're starting to finally breed on their own again and now that i know how long it takes them to become mature enough to breed that's like quite the achievement now i get why it's such a big deal 40 years old before you start laying your first eggs there's some bird species that do that too um i think that some of the endangered toucan species or like hornbill species and i could be wrong on what they are but some of those guys over in australia which is actually kind of one of the places we're mimicking with the island treasures zoo here 
they don't become mature until they're like up in their 60s or something ridiculous like that. Can you imagine the struggle of staying alive for 60 years before you're able to have babies? That is some long-term investment as a species. There's something to be said when you are a species and you just like have your babies when you're super young and you have them really fast, like say guinea pigs or other prey species like mice, rats, um, bunnies, who usually they only live like a year, if that, if they're one of the lucky few. And so they have their babies really early and they have a lot of them. And then you switch over to something like that bird who doesn't have kids until they're like way up in their 60s or something like that. And then it's normally one or two eggs a year with like a lot of investment towards the baby. And I just thought that was pretty amazing. All right. So enough about long-term breeding investments. Let's start working on our zoo. And let's put in a restaurant if I have one. I think it's really going to help things if we have a restaurant. Ooh, and let's get some of these aquariums and some of these other stuff, these insect houses. Oh, oh my gosh. Have you guys seen the huntsman spider in the salad bags that are like all over the news in Australia right now? I saw that and I was just totally stunned. I mean, it happens all over the world in like everybody's defense, you see that kind of stuff where spiders just start showing up unexpectedly in food, all um, in bags, like any kind of insects really, all over the world, but it just kind of was like huntsman spiders are big, and I can't imagine reaching for a bag of lettuce and that's what you see instead. <laughs> I, I think I'd freak out. All right, this man was unhappy. The smell is, do we not have any maintenance staff? I thought we had, do we not have any maintenance staff actually? That's a good question. We have one worker. Are you just moving it really slow, sir? I don't think he's enough. Is this area really messy? No. I don't know what that guy was complaining about then. My maintenance worker seems to be doing just a fine job. All right, all right. And we're doing our research. But yeah, apparently there's huntsman spiders that are just like showing up in bags of salad in Australia right now. So maybe we need to advertise that our, oh, and Remus just passed away of old age. Maybe we need to advertise that like our salads at our zoo are spider free. Unless I guess he wanted the protein. Mm -hmm. Some people might be into that. All right, let's keep scooching. Restaurant, there's a restaurant. All right, let's put research into the family restaurant. Any of the other ones open yet? I don't think so. Oh, the Blue Well Hall. I forgot about the halls. Oh, they're cool. We'll have to put down the cave painting hall. I like to just use these in pretty much any zoo pretty often. We'll have to put that down in the future. Did I get, did I get a little, ah, oh, every time we research something. Restaurants. All right, it's just the family restaurant that we can get right now. That's okay, we'll install it in just a minute. All right, so what should we put inside of the empty exhibit? And why is this child unhappy? We have dessert carts, you're eating some right now. So let's go ahead and empty this out just so we can kind of see what our options are. And just because it's good to do things fresh every now and then. And let's put, ooh, that's a really cute thing though. I'm gonna leave that right there. And anything else? What are you? What on earth is this? Is that just, who knows what it was? And see what our options for the island excursions pack is. Just to go through some of those creatures that are with that uh, modded expansion. Because that's kind of what we're going for right now. All right, so walking with dinosaurs, not quite. Wild China, not quite. Reptilia, nautical voyage, obsessional ocean. Uh, jellyfish, ah, island excursions, there we go. So we have kind of like a centric, a centerpiece right here. Um, I'm thinking maybe the island fox, which is critically endangered. And people really like their canids. So we might do, might do one of those guys. There's also the Borneo clouded leopard, but I imagine it would prefer to be kind of off in, in a different area, not quite so centrally located. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's been our one year anniversary. Huzzah, go Island Zoo, go. All right, there's also the civets. Um, there's a the little axis deer, which would be kind of, ooh, it's actually really pretty. And then this is the, the fallen nuke, fallen nuke, which I think would be a really interesting, very shy little marsupial. I don't know much about it beyond that, like at all. So I need to do some research on what it is. And if you guys know anything about it, please speak up and let us know. Cause I think that would be quite fun to learn about. All right, let me go ahead and remove some of this pathing right there. And now we have a nice little restaurant where the path isn't quite matched up. Let's fix that. And then we'll start looking for the animals. Whoops, 
All right, well, I didn't didn't predict this part, but we could I guess we could do this just for now. All right, let's go ahead. Actually, these are kind of nice paths. Hmm, we might be switching the paths up pretty soon. All right, let's do this. And then maybe this. There we go. And we can, we can, ooh, look at everybody just boom to the restaurant. They're like, ah, oh, it's about time. It's about time. And we'll actually make this really cheap so people can just get what they want. All right. They're actually all going off to go view things. Okay. That's fine. All right. Back to the animals for a minute. So I kind of want to put this guy in here, but I'm beginning to feel like the island fox might be a more popular exhibit for now. Um, then, of course, the Sumatran striped rabbit, which breeds really quickly and is worth a lot. Um, there's also the island raccoon, which always seemed a bit popular. The Borneo river shark, the spotted eagle ray. Uh, the Tenrik, which is pretty darn cute. It's tiny, too. Uh, we have flatback turtles. We do have a few of the monkey species. Those might be kind of fun. The warty pig. Everybody wants to see a warty pig, right? Right? Let's do the island fox, I think. Um, this is kind of a huge exhibit, though. I wonder if I should do something that could be more multi species <gasps> Maybe I could do something like that. Because I think civets. Maybe the deer? Like, a couple deer. What do they eat? Anything that can eat, like, the similar... Okay, well, the civet eats meat, so they might actually... We could put some cassowaries in. <laughs> <laughs> Some sassy cassowaries. I personally love cassowaries. Um, the cloud and leopard again eats the meat. The warty pig. We could put some warty pigs and some deer together, but that's not like the most exciting thing in the world. We could put this big guy out here. Huh. Well. Well. You know what? I guess we have to put the deer somewhere. So let's put these axis deer over here. Maybe just a couple of them. And then we'll see if we can mix it, mix it with maybe this guy over here. Where is he from? I don't know. We're starting to really mix the places. But they are endangered. And you know what? Just because they aren't like a, a cool looking eel or something, they still need to have their day to shine. So Platypus 2, go eat your food. You know where it is. All right. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put the deer in. And we're looking at more of a tropical dry forest. So are, is this guy a tropical dry forest too? They are indeed both tropical dry forest. So let's see what we would put in here for them. Let's remove, well, that might be a good plant. Let's go ahead, tropical dry forest, tropical dry forest. This shouldn't take too long to set up for them. Let's see, tropical, tropical dry forest. There we go. All right, you guys, this is what we're looking at. Tropical dry forest. And you guys know me well enough to know that somehow I will make a little bit of greenery and and life be breathed into here. So tropical dry forest. And then maybe a pinch of tropical rainforest. Ah, it's still brown. Still brown. Uh, tropical dry forest, temperate rainforest. Ooh, there we go. I'm just going to kind of mix a little bit of it in. Perry, go eat. You know where food is. There we go. And then let's put in maybe like a nice shallow water spot right over here. Oh, that looks actually really nice. Dang it, Platypus 2. Why won't you just eat? Why must they always be sick? You're in the water. Why can you not, guys not eat? Why can they eat like one day and then the next day they just forget how? I don't understand. Can I put the food, like is there a better food to put in here for them? A freeform food? I'll do whatever you guys need. There we go. All right, and let's come in here. Oh, we're getting some sick animals. Why? Let's... All right, you guys have food. You guys have been eating the shellfish. There's evidence they've been eating the shellfish. Really hungry. I'm watching you. Is that all you needed? Are you eating now? D I saw him take something. Did you see him take something? Did he eat? He ate a little bit. All right, they're eating from the net now. Platypus 2. Going to investigate. Oh, there are a lot of hungry animals in the zoo. Why? Why? All right, fine. Here, have another one of these. I'm spending so much money just trying to keep... Perry is really hungry too. Go eat. Eat. Darn you. Oh, there's food. Why won't you eat it? Platypus are very frustrating, you guys. I don't recommend getting platypus, just so you know. 
Hopefully. Why? There, there's food. There's food. Do you need deeper water? Is that what it is? <laughs> is that what you need? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's quite, quite the conundrum, my friends. Quite the conundrum. And all I can do is just kind of like make indents inside the water and hope it's, it's better. Is this better? I think I made it deeper. You have food. I watched you eat. Oh boy. We're going to get in trouble at this rate. Going to eat the clams from the block of ice with clams. Jazz is now pregnant. I don't know how long we can put up with these platypus. Going to investigate the jar with fish. All right. We're going to see if they'll eat. I'm just about ready to toss my hands up in the air and say platypus are the most difficult things ever. And we're just going to have to deal with it. Looking at the jar with fish, going into the water. Fine. I'm selling it then. If you're not going to eat it, I'm selling it. Going into the water. Get in here, Perry. Going to eat the clams from the block of ice with clams. Do they need, like, something else? Do they need fish? Eating the clams from the block of ice with clams. Oh, I saw him say it. I saw him say it. I see the block of ice with clams jumping around. And nothing happened to his health or his hunger. Oh, you guys. I think I'm just about ready to call it quits with our adorable platypi. I think I just... Oh, why? Why, platypus? Ah, all right. Well, I'm ready to call it quits with the platypus for now, but we'll deal with that next time. And we will continue adding things and more exciting things. And somebody suggested vultures, which I think would be pretty cool, into our awesome zoo. So until next time, guys, I will see you then. Bye-bye.